Hi folks, this is Jay. Are you okay today? It's good to see you. I hope everybody's okay. Uh, we're looking at, um, you got to see uh, Jason there, his face. I've just been reading uh, this book. I'm just drinking uh, uh, some Coke. It's in the evening and, uh, excuse me, just got a dry mouth. We're continuing our reading of the Fox's Book of Martyrs, uh, Chapter 2. He writes, uh, After Gordian's death in the reign of Decius, the emperor came to Antioch, where having a dis and then ordered him to sacrifice to pagan deities as an expiation as an expiation for his offense this being refused he was committed to prison loaded with chains treated with great severities severities and then beheaded together with these young men who had been his pupil 251 AD in the year of our Lord 251 the Emperor Decius having erected a pagan temple at Ephesus, he commanded all who were in that city to sacrifice to the idols. This order was nobly refused by seven of his own soldiers, Maximus, Martinus, Joannus, Malchus, Dionysius, a Syrian, and Const uh, Constantinus. The emperor, wishing to win these soldiers to renounce their faith by his entreaties and lenity, gave them a considerable respite till he returned from an ex during the Empress since they escaped and hid themselves in a cavern which the Emperor being informed of at this return the mouth of the cave was closed up and they all perished with hunger. Theodora, a beautiful young lady of Antioch and refusing to sacrifice to the Roman idols was condemned to the stews that her virtues might be sacrificed to the brutality of lust. Didymus, a Christian, disguised himself in the habit of Roman soldier, went to the house informed Theodora, who he was, and advised her to make her escape in his clothes. This being effected, and a man found in the brothel instead of a beautiful lady, Didymus was taken before the president to whom confessing the truth, and knowing that he was a Christian, the sentence of death was immediately pronounced against him. Theodora, hearing her delivery was likely to suffer, came to the judge, threw herself at his feet, and begged that the sentence might fall on her as the guilty person. But deaf to the cries of the innocent, Marinus and Messalinius said, Where are you carrying the innocent? This interger in sorry, interrogatory occasioned them uh, to be seized, and all three, after being tortured, were handed and uh, killed. Excuse me. Origin, the celebrated presbyter and catechist of Alexandria, at the age of 64 was seized, thrown into a loathsome prison, laden with fetters, his feet placed in the stocks and his legs extended to the uttermost for several successive days. He was threatened with fire and tormented by every lingering means the most infernal imagination could suggest. During this cruel temporizing, the Emperor Decius died and Gallus, who succeeded him, engaged in a war with the Goths, the Christians mess with a respite. In this interim, Origen obtained his enlargement and retiring to Tyre, he there remained till his death, which happened when he was in the 69th year of his age. Gallus, the emperor, having concluded his war, a plague broke out in the em empire. Sacrifices to the pagan deities were ordered by the emperor, and persecution spread from the interior to the extreme parts of the empire, and they fell martyrs to the impetuosity of the rabble as well as the prejudice of the magistrate. Among these were Cornelius, the Christian bishop of Rome, and Lucius, his successor in 253. Most of the errors which crept into the church at this time arose from plaguing, placing human reason 
in competition with revelation, but the fallacy of such arguments being proved by the most able divines, the opinions they had created vanished away like the stars before the sun. Well, I think we'll stop there, but we've had a, a real look at a lot of the persecution in the early church. And I think it should encourage you to to not be discouraged, but continue to preach the gospel and continue to serve the Lord. And may God bless you in your service for him.